is the electric vehicle the future? Well, yes. <laughs> yes. Quit talking stupid. Knock it off. <laughs> Knock it off. Hey, what's up, y'all? Time is, you know, 11 to 5, 11 30, something like that on Friday. Happy Friday for those who working a job. Hope you get off early today. Anyway, um, beautiful day in the neighborhood here in the Twin City. And uh, I was on a thread today where um, one of my Facebook friends, John Heinen, was talking about his, uh, his hybrid vehicle that he owns, right? And how he likes it and how he likes EV technology. And, you know, you always got a few people who, you know, did their research, right? And they want to start bringing up stuff like how much does it cost to run an electric car? Uh, does it cost the same as buying gas? And um, the government rebate, they're giving you your money. And, you know, all the theories and the, and the stuff that I've known for 40 years about the government. Don't bring that up. That's a false, that's a false flag. That's a red herring. You're not talking about the subject. The subject matter is, is the electric vehicle the future? Well, yes. <laughs> yes. Quit talking stupid. Knock it off. <laughs> Knock it off. Because <laughs> the bottom line is, anytime the governments of the earth decide to pour billions of dollars into electric vehicle charging, they're making a statement that you cannot deny. Think back, back in the 1800s, the governments of the earth, starting with the United States, invested millions. And back then, that's a lot of money. Invested millions in the internal combustion gasoline-powered vehicles. And who do you think was complaining the most? People riding around in horses and buggies. Blacksmiths. Come on, man. You should be able to read the writing on the wall by now. Every major automobile manufacturer on this planet either has EV vehicles or is building EV vehicles right now. They know something that you don't know. Don't you think it's time for you to learn what that is? And... You hear the argument, well, the electric vehicle, is the electricity comes from coal. No, wrong again. <laughs> okay? Because the new shit kills all of that. Why do you think they keep promoting that nonsense? One word, hydrogen. So if hydrogen and, if it, and green hydrogen, not black or blue hydrogen, green hydrogen, if green hydrogen is not only powering all of the EV chargers, but has already has the capability to power cities with one hydrogen station, clean, 100% green, what are you talking about? It's a red herring. It's a false flag argument. You're wasting time. You are a blacksmith right before he, before internal combustion engines started rolling up and down your roads. Well, guess what? Those roads were dirt until they came out with the internal combustion engine. Do you think all these streets, highways, byways, elect, uh, expressways, and off-ramps, and gas stations, and Super Americas, and 7-Elevens, you think they've been here forever? No. The entire infrastructure... Billions, going back to the 1800s, was invested in building the infrastructure that we now know. So do you think that the governments of the earth are switching to electric hap haphazardly? You think they're not, they haven't done any research on this? You think the science hasn't already proven itself to be viable? 
Hey, Ron, you can say all you want to. <laughs> you can say it all you want to. But pretty soon, you're going to have to eat them words, bro. I'm telling you. I love you, but you're going to eat them words. <laughs> I know you will. One or two things are going to happen. Pretty soon, if you live, your Corvette, you are going to seek to either retrofit it for hydrogen or electricity. Watch. You can't drive it with no gas station. If you live, that is. I'm not saying it's going to happen next week, but I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. I know the science. I'm in the industry. I'm part owner of one of the biggest renewable energy companies in the world. Electric vehicles is a $7 trillion industry by 2030. Seven years from now, seven trillion. By 2050, 43 trillion dollar industry. Do you think that's gonna go away? No, it's not. Anybody fighting it right now is a horse and buggy blacksmith advocate from the 1800s. That shit is over. Gasoline powered vehicles is over. Now, you can still have, look, most of the people who advocating for um, gas powered cars is doing it out of emotion. And that's okay. I get that. That's what the horse and buggy people did. Why the hell would I take my old horse who all I got to do is feed him some hay and keep my buggy wheels running? Why the hell would I go to a thing that runs on horsepower that can blow up with a, with a fuel in it that can ex literally blow me up in the air? <laughs> okay. Stay with that. I want you to, but again, you're either going to get on this wave and ride it, or you're going to drown. Trust me when I tell you, I am the canary in the coal mine. The electric game is here. The hydrogen game is here. The geothermal game is here. The solar game is here. The wind game is here. So, if you want to keep driving Corvettes and Maseratis and Mercedes-Benz, because all these vehicles have electric options. And if you want to keep driving the Corvette you have or the Mercedes-Benz you have or the uh, Fiat that you have, whatever you have, Chevy, Ford, Tesla, not Tesla because it's electric, but if you want to drive all of these internal combustion cars in the future, we want you to, but understand, you are going to have to retrofit them. And why would you not want to? Especially if you could get a hydrogen engine put in it, then you don't have to fuel it up at all. It runs on water. And the only exhaust, water. Forget what you think you know. <laughs> I'm telling you, forget what you think you know. All that shit you think you know is over. You don't have to believe me. You can get mad. Scratch your ass and get glad. I'm telling you what's here. Not coming. I'm telling you what is here. Like I said, I'm a part owner and monthly dividend recipient of one of the biggest renewable energy companies in the world. Let me ask you a question. Are you going to argue with me if I tell you I've got a box that's like this big that I plug into an outlet? Now, for a house that's over 2,000 square feet, you might need two. Well, let's say one box. You plug it into one of the outlets in your house. Say you got less than 2,000. And I'm not talking about necessarily an owned house. Let's say you got a one-bedroom apartment, two-bedroom townhouse, four-bedroom house, six-bedroom house, mansion, whatever. If it's 2,000 and below, you need one. 2,000 above, you need two or more, right? Plug it into an outlet. You don't have to be any particular outlet, anyone in your house. And then the next month, your, your electric bill is going to go down by 40%. Are you going to argue with me about that? 40%. Okay, let's say your electric bill, let's do the numbers. Let's say your electric bill is $300 in the winter here in Minnesota, $300. And say it's three hundred dollars in Austin, Texas, in the summer. All right, three hundred dollars. Ten percent is thirty. 
20% is 60, 40% is 120 bucks. So suddenly your electric bill in the heat of the summer has gone down $160. Are you going to argue with me about the technology? No, you're just going to plug it in the house. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Well, let me ask you. Say you live in, let me get a good example. Say you live in, huh? Think of a really small town in Minnesota. Somebody type in a really super small town in northern Minnesota. But let's say you live in a really small town, War Road. That's a good one. War Road, Minnesota. Population 700 people. No, let's take where I used to live, Waverly, Minnesota. Population 800 people. Right? Right between Montrose and Howard Lake. Waverly. What if I had a conversation with the mayor of Waverly and say, listen, mayor. I need you to get a hold of all of your farmer friends who have some fallow land, some land that they're not putting anything on. I want to build a hydrogen station on that land, connected to the to the um, to the um, what do they call it? Uh, grid connected to the electric grid, and the whole city of Waverly are going to burn hydrogen, clean 100% hydrogen electricity at half the cost. And every every um, um, kilowatt hour of electricity that that is over what they need, you can sell it back to the grid. You think they'll do that? Well, yeah, I have that capability. That's a multi million dollar endeavor, and I get a percentage of that just from the sale. But but if I, if I didn't do it and somebody else in the company did it, I still get paid the dividend from the whole company. You better catch up. You better catch up. <laughs> I posted a video on my YouTube channel, Team Greg Sane. That's my YouTube channel. I posted a video, video on my YouTube channel talking to my family and friends, my close friends and my actual family, saying, get started. Get in this. We missed, all, we missed our Apple moment. We missed our Microsoft moment. We missed our Tesla moment. We missed our... Uh, Amazon moment. We missed all those moments. Don't miss this one. We missed the Bitcoin. Don't miss this one. This is the future. The governments of the earth have already mandated it and allocated billions and billions and billions of dollars. But what do all of those nations, what do all of those governments not have? A sales force now they do. You better holler at me. I'm not saying you got to sell nothing. Just get in the fucking wave and win. <laughs> On that, I'm out of here. I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all have a great day, all right? These are dinosaurs in the prehistoric age. <laughs> Peace.